uh, myself Sachin. So I'll be talking about secure and decentralized live streaming uh, using IPFS and blockchain. Before I proceed, how many of you already have worked or at least used blockchain or have got an idea about what blockchain exactly is? Okay, cool. And uh, how many of you have used live streaming like Facebook? Have you went live on live on YouTube or Facebook? Have you used it? Okay. So here we'll be talking about how can we decentralize that. So, so this is, uh, before we proceed, uh, this is a part of a research published paper. Uh, here we'll be talking about traditional delivery network and drawbacks, why we are moving away from centralized and towards decentralized networks, what are our solutions and advantages, proposed architecture and so on. And how we'll talk about how pretty much we have worked on the application stack compared with the sc scaling, security and use cases. So usually uh, what happens is the, uh, whatever live streaming we have been using so far are based on con uh, traditional uh, delivery network. And these, uh, these networks have their own drawbacks. So the first one being is they all use the same content source and the same content source goes to multiple servers, okay? So these servers, uh, and they have to be a, there have to be a lot because let's say there are uh, 50,000 users uh, streaming this, uh, different content at the same time then there have to be multiple servers to near, uh, something called CDNs near to those users, okay? And that this is this is where they this is how they uh, combat the scalability issues. And there will be like distribution centers, and the same copy of data will be put across all the devices. So data instead of being shared, it's being duplicated, right? So the so the duplication of data happens, and then uh, a user is going to uh, access it over the laptop, the no mobile device, or using his computer or whatever. So big companies, they pretty much own these big servers and they basically have, can pay for larger computation storage because transcoding, transmuxing, translating, all of these are very computational expensive. So this pretty much chokes your entire bandwidth. So let's say if you are a small company or if you want to uh, test your own uh, webinar and if you don't want to uh, trust uh, a very encrypted or a very, uh, if you want to have a chat room which is pretty much very much private, you don't want that pretty much to be going to a central cloud, you do not have any option to rather go with these existing ones. So this particular stack is not fit for decentralized network. Now we are using blockchain and a lot of uh, data storage have been happening on decentralized network, but still we have been sitting on centralized server architecture. So this is where we kind of uh, decentralize the streaming part. So we use four basic stack, uh, basic different technologies. Uh, the first one is HTTP live streaming, which is HLS. The second we use blockchain to, pick it to, to pretty much do content delivery across all the network from the publisher to the subscriber, we use IPFS. And we use smart contracts to create chat rooms and connect the subscriber and the publisher for the same content. So to talk about HTTP like HLS, so there are multiple encoding um, protocols, HLS and HTTP live streaming, which is developed by Apple uh, for their QuickTime, Safari, and uh, other platforms. There is also called Dash, dynamic adaptive um, uh, streaming service uh, over HTTP. And then there is Microsoft Smooth Streaming as well. We've been using HLS. Um, as you all know, blockchain is basically a data structure of basically growing list of records in which multiple transactions are clubbed into one particular block and so many blocks continue to uh, exist and these are immutable by nature. So there is, so these are resistant to modification of the data. IPFS, so this is IPFS is a protocol. It is designed to create a content, content addressable peer-to-peer -peer method of storage of data, which means data is not associated where it's basically um, stored. Rather it's addressable or rather it's distinguishable by what exactly data is. It is based off distributed hash tables. So basically you get to know what type of data is there because you, you because in a decentralized network you do not know what, where the data is going to be actually residing. Many people could pin that particular data and still have that. Uh, even if you want to delete it, it, you cannot because you do not know how many people are basically pinning that particular hash. So this is uh, persistent storage. And there are many, many IPFS nodes being all over the world, so that means uh, if there are multiple network, if the network is very good, which means the data propagation would be very fast. And we are using smart contract to pretty much uh, uh, give association to how many people can be viewing to that particular. So it's it's more on from the security side, uh, where people could access uh, what kind of stream they can have access to. You can democratize like 
there can be private stream, there can be public stream, there can be webinar, there can be multiple use cases for your live streaming. So we are using smart contract for that particular purpose. 